One of the best things about my job as superintendent of Sarasota County Schools is an opportunity to get into our classrooms and see the incredible things happening every day. I've had those opportunities many times during the last few months and I've been so impressed by what I am seeing. I see our teachers really elevating the level of instruction to meet these new standards. I see the use of complex text of varying difficulty levels or readability levels in all types of classrooms, content area classrooms where they're looking at primary text evidence, really helping reinforce the skills we want our students to develop in using text to support their conclusions and their responses to questions. I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing in terms of the teacher's use of different te questioning techniques, sometimes giving students a lot of wait time, which is kind of nerve-wracking when you have someone in the classroom observing you, but allowing our students to really think more deeply and always just not saying correct or incorrect, but asking the students then to support their conclusion based on the evidence that they have before them and asking their colleagues to see if they agree or disagree or have perhaps a different view. All of those techniques and strategies are helping our students develop those critical thinking skills that are going to be so critical as they move forward to develop proficiency with these new standards. I see wonderful writing activities where teachers are really developing new strategies for the very different type of writing assessment many of our students will be required to um, try and to develop as they look at the ways of setting um, an opinion or a stand and giving supporting evidence or a claim or a counterclaim. I'm seeing the use of different planning techniques for our students. With the simulations, I've seen those used as actual writing instruction, having our students think about how they responded to a question and how that might have been improved. All of that is very impressive in the very short time our teachers have had to really understand not only the new standards, but how they are going to be assessed. I've seen excellent problem solving, mathematics skills, both in math and science, where the students are asked more than just understanding the procedures required, but really digging deep into an application type of problem to see the different ways it might be solved. But I also see attention to fluency skills, where students are developing the ability to respond quickly to those types of operations or procedures that they need to have quick at their fingertips so that they can truly apply them to those deeper and more difficult problems. I see very intentional use of the development of vocabulary, where our teachers are not simply asking for definitions and being satisfied with that. They're asking that the students actually use the vocabulary appropriately in the different productive tasks that they provide for their students. All of that will serve our students so well as they attempt these to represent proficiency with these new standards. Certainly there continues to be anxiety with the format that our students will be presented when they'll be required to respond to questions that look very different from the traditional FCAT. Items that might have an A or an a B part. Items that require students perhaps to move um, uh, in their response an object from one site to another. Where they might have to have a short response um, examples of evidence and a very, as we've talked before, a very different writing assessment. The format is concerning to many of us, whether it's in the computer-based assessment or the paper. We need to have our students feel comfortable with the format and the tools that they have available within that format so that that doesn't become an obstacle and a challenge for them as they pr try to demonstrate proficiency and mastery of these many rig rigorous standards. It's important if you haven't had an opportunity to go into the portal, the FSA portal, fsaassessments.org, it's important that you do so to get an idea of what will be presented to our students. What will it look like? What will the directions look like? What are the tools that are available for our students? 
we will work with staff to find ways to acquaint our students with those that new format so that doesn't become an obstacle. We know in reading the paper and listening to the legislative committees, there's a lot of attention on what are the changes we need to make in this state in looking at all the assessment requirements. But those changes will not impact the, what we are required to do for this testing window. So we have to continue to strive forward, just as I see so many times in our classrooms. Strive forward so our students are well prepared to be able to take these tests and show what they have learned over these last few months. We need to stay calm, we need to stay focused, just like I'm seeing when I walk into those classrooms, to help support our students. Then as changes occur, I will certainly do everything I can to keep you informed and we'll work through the impacts of this testing window. But in the meantime, we serve our students best if we continue to provide that high quality instruction that I'm seeing, as well as the format that they'll be required to demonstrate those skills with and help our students feel confident as they approach this testing window which has a lot of anxieties for all of us. You're doing a great job staying focused and not letting those worries impair our ability to provide excellent instruction to our students. And for many of you who do not have classroom responsibilities, the support you give our classroom teachers and our students is also critical as we move through the next few months. So let's stick together, let's stay focused, and we will have a successful testing experience for our students as we move forward in the next few months. Thank you for what you're doing to support our school district.